We will take the first question from Gabriel Gonzalez with Caveside Press. Hello, Ricardo. You've been prepping for a ground specialist in Hall. Now you're booked against another opponent. Can you just talk about the stylistic adjust adjustments? Uh, yeah, I was prepping for a ground opponent, but I wasn't neglecting other areas. So um, just like every camp, I, I train for, for just about anything and uh, feel prepared no matter who they put me in there with. Is there more pressure because it's his UFC debut? I mean, you're the vet, you're the former title challenger. Just that added pressure to, hey, show that there are levels to the game, so to speak? There's pressure for every fight. You know, uh, that's, that just comes with the sport. It comes with the job. So learning how to deal with it is, is what I've done since day one. So... I don't think it's going to be any different from any other fight. I know he's a newcomer. I know he's going to be trying to prove to people that he belongs here, and I'm going to be trying to prove to people that there are levels to this game, just like you said. You've had a bit of a layoff between fights. What did you work on in the time between the, in terms of becoming a better fighter? Uh, just I kept training the whole time, you know, just uh, constantly trying to experiment with things. Um, and focused on my business, UFC gym in Naperville, and uh, that was about it. Final question, what does Bill bring as an opponent that makes him dangerous? Uh, he just brings in that he's got nothing to lose in this fight. You know, that makes anybody dangerous, so he's just going to come in kind of, you know, I, f I, I feel like everybody's expecting him to lose because he's a newcomer and he's, he's going up against a vet like myself. Um, and I need to be wary of that and, and just stay, stay technical, stick to my game plan, and just adapt to whatever he brings in the cage. Thank you, Ricardo. You're welcome. We will take our next set of questions from Jim Barcelona with the Miami Herald. Thank you, Ricardo. I'm curious about this pandemic and the training you mentioned Illinois. Did you do any training in Miami or South Florida or just stayed up uh, by the home base? Yeah, I went down and spent two weeks in Miami. Uh, these last two weeks right before I came out to Las Vegas. about It was about two and a half weeks. Um, so normally I do four. I, I cut it a little short just because it was kind of a COVID hotbed down there. But while I was there, we were really careful with the training, with who I was training with. Um, and, you know, it worked out. I passed the first COVID test. So uh, happy about that, and uh, besides that, it was kind of just normal business down there. How long in your time have you been training in Miami, too, and what brought you to Miami to train? Uh, so back in 2009, it was just kind of by chance. We went down there. I was in the middle of a camp back when I was fighting in the WEC. It was, uh, it was around the October time, so weather was kind of breaking in Chicago, getting a little cold. And we decided to go down and train in Miami for a week just to kind of get away. Uh, ended up at a gym called MMA Masters and got my ass kicked. And I was like, wow, that's what I need. So I kept going back and uh, kind of met, like, you know, my trainers there. Um, one of my best friends now, good training and partner of mine, Louis Palomino. And, uh, and then from that point on, I'd go down for every fight for a, a month before the fight. Ricardo, in South Florida especially, it's been like a hotbed on here with, as far as MMA. And we all hear about American Top Team and they're doing great things. And Henry Hoof with Sanford MMA. Not too much we don't hear about it. Masters. And I'm just wondering if you just tell us a little more about Masters and how are they and just you training there and bringing them up and everyone there bringing MMA Masters up. Yeah, you know, we ended up there. I felt like I clicked really well with, with the people training there and with my coaches. Um, if you go down to Miami and you go to, like, the local fight scene, you know, top team, MMA Masters, uh, back when Black Zillions was there, they were kind of all fighting each other. Like, they're, they're, those were the biggest fights that the local promoters were putting together. Um, so they, they were kind of like the diamond in the rough, and in – I just felt like I kept learning every time I went down there and trained with them, so that's what made me keep going back. And who did you bring with you for this fight? Uh, Cesar Carnero, Daniel Valverde are, are my coaches from MMA Masters, and I brought um, 
my business partner in my gym, who was my former college wrestling teammate, and he helped me out a lot this camp with uh, with my conditioning and stuff. So Matt Kusher is his name. Hey, thank you very much. All the best. Thank you. We will take our next set of questions from Danny Segura with MMA Junkie. Hey, Ricardo. Uh, so obviously a lot going on in the world right now, and you yourself, you're obviously a, a husband, a father, you own a gym. Um, and then, you know, a, a week out, Ryan Hall falls out. Um, what's sort of been your mindset in, in these last few days? Uh, did you think they were able to find you an opponent? Um, what's it sort of been uh, like dealing with, with an opponent falling out and all that, plus everything that's, that's going on right now in the world? Yeah, first, you know, it was just alarming because I didn't know if they were going to be able to find an opponent. And it, it sucks when it happens at that point where you're pretty much in your last week of camp or last pretty much few days of training. And then for something like that to happen is pretty devastating. It, it took me about 12 hours to process it and let it sink in and then kind of readjust my mindset. Uh, but once I did that, I was good. And I just kept training until... Uh, Finally, they came back and said that Bill Algeo took the fight. So, you know, thank you to him for, for taking it on, on such short notice and during these crazy times. Yeah, for sure. And, and we spoke um, a few months ago uh, when, when Ryan Hall pulled out, of, uh, pulled, out of, pulled out of the first booking and then eventually that, that card ended up getting postponed. And you were pretty upset about uh, him uh, withdrawing from the bout. Um, and now he, you know, withdrew a second time uh, for, for, for this card. Um, is that a fight you'd like you to even want to revisit at, at some point, or, or are you kind of done with the Ryan Hall matchup? Yeah, I'm, I'm, you know what, I'm, I'm not even thinking about Ryan Hall right now. Uh, I, I'm 100% focused on Bill Algio, so he's, he's in front of me right now. He's who I have to worry about, so any other possible matchup isn't even in my head at the moment. For sure. And uh, you, you were excited for that matchup with Ryan Hall to sort of test your grappling skills because you got a very underrated uh, grappling skill set, or at least you, you felt that way. Um, for this one, um, do you still want to do that, or is the plan to like take things to the ground and, and kind of uh, prove everyone that you know you got some of the best ground skills in, in the weight class, or what's kind of the game plan here? The the game plan is is going to be to take advantage of every opportunity that comes my way in that fight and just stay on my toes and. And, uh, you know, just be kind of reactive and react to the situation that, that's given to me at that, at that given moment. Sure. And uh, last question in Spanish. Um, ¿Le quieres mandar un, un saludo o un mensaje a toda la gente latina, a toda la gente hispana que te ha estado apoyando por, por muchos años y, y te van a apoyar este, este sábado? Claro. Uh, quiero mandar un saludo y agradecer a, a todos mis fanáticos de Latinoamérica por todo el apoyo que me han dado durante los años y durante mi carrera. Y tú sabes, un, una de mis metas siempre ha sido representar, representar a todos ustedes uh, lo mejor que puedo. Muchas gracias, Ricardo. Suerte el sábado. Uh, gracias. We will take our next questions from Alfredo Bush with Claro Sports. Hola Ricardo, qué gusto saludarte. Eh, quisiera preguntarte antes que nada, ¿cómo te sientes en, en esta semana de pelea después de que ha pasado poquito más de un año que no subes a la jaula? ¿Cómo te sientes? ¿Cómo ha sido estos meses para ti? Me siento normal, yo soy un veterano en este deporte y estoy acostumbrado de, de la semana de la pelea y con todo lo que tenemos que hacer. Um, y para mí es normal, es como yo estaba en la jaula ayer. Eh, ¿Qué esperas este, este fin de semana después de que te vienes preparando para un oponente, te lo terminan cambiando por distintas circunstancias? Eh, ¿Cómo lo tomas este nuevo reto? Uh, bueno, yo sé que es un oponente, un oponente nuevo, pero va a ser los mismos resultados y yo voy a salir con la mano en alto. Eh, ¿cómo, ¿Cómo has sentido estos meses, eh, Ricardo, en los que el mundo ha cambiado tanto, en los que no habrá gente, en las gradas? En fin, esa parte, justo para ti que eres un, un peleador veterano que sabe todo lo que hay alrededor, ¿cómo has vivido esto, este tiempo? Bien, y, y lo mismo que siempre, yo siempre trabajo muy, muy duro para cada pelea y, y no fue diferente en, en este campamento. Uh, o sea, el mundo cambió, pero yo no cambié. Yo, yo siempre trabajo duro como, y, y, y siempre voy a trabajar duro como siempre. Perfecto, Ricardo. Te agradezco mucho. Suerte el sábado. Gracias. We 
will take the next questions from Carlos Contreras with Milenio Diario. Ricardo, ¿cómo estás? Bien, ¿y tú? Bien, bien. Oye, eh, eh, parece obviamente que el, que el cambio de eh, con tan corto aviso siempre es difícil, pero es una pelea que puede ser mejor para ti en el, en el estilo, porque obviamente las peleas con Ryan Hall normalmente no son lucidoras, ¿no? Tienes que defenderte muy bien en el piso, sabes que siempre es una amenaza. Eh, eso te puede ayudar un poco viniendo de, de, de una derrota, ¿no? Como lo que pasó con Calvin Kerr. Sí, yo creo que esto va a ser una ventaja para mí porque este oponente quiere pelear. Un tipo como Ryan Hall siempre está corriendo y, y tirándose en el piso, buscando el tobillo y tra tratando de hacer sus trucos de jiu-jitsu. Um, pero me gusta esta pelea más. Eh, ¿Qué has visto de, de, de Algeo en, en, la, en, las, en las pocas horas que has tenido, me imagino, de estudiar? Um, no sé, na nada que nunca he visto antes. Yo sé que es un buen peleador y es completo, es un cinta negra de jiu-jitsu, tiene un buen stand-up. Um, lo único es que es un poquito más alto que yo y a veces es un poquito complicado pelear con gente más alto que tiene uh, un, un alcance más larga que tú, pero yo soy un veterano y yo, yo lo hice antes en el pasado y, y estoy listo, estoy preparado. Eh, los fans del MMA de, de, de muchos años que, que te vieron en la WEC y que crecieron con, con, con esta división, aunque bajaron de 155 a 145, eh, te identifica mucho con esta generación, con Frankie Edgar, con José Aldo, que hoy están en 135. ¿Cómo los viste a los dos en esa división? Y no sé si imaginas llevar tu cuerpo hasta, hasta esta división eh, en, en, el, en algún punto de tu carrera. Si yo quisiera ir a, a 135. Sí, primero cómo los has visto a Aldo y a Frankie, y luego si tú crees que tú pudieras. Yo, sí, yo he visto a Aldo y Frankie, y los dos pelearon muy bien en, en esa categoría, pero para mí no creo que que sería posible. Um, si yo voy a ir a, a una categoría nueva, yo regresaré a, a peso ligero, yo creo. Pero para bajar a 135 libras, para mí no es posible. Eh, muchas gracias, Ricardo. De nada. Thank you so much, Ricardo. That is all the time we had for you, sir. All right, thank you.